of death surrounds thee both. Get thee behind me! <laughs> Alas, these days stupidity is all too prevalent. You know, I never asked your names when we last met. I'm Evie Fry, and this is my brother Jacob. Tell me, do you believe in ghosts? Not particularly. Yes. I'm skeptical myself. Here we are, in the world's most advanced city, yet its citizens are so enthralled to the supernatural, they leave themselves vulnerable to charlatans. Which is why I joined the Ghost Club, the first society in the world to look systematically at the phenomenon. Because truth, like a spirit, must be cajoled before it will reveal itself. Will you join us? Sounds absolutely ridiculous. Why not? It does sound intriguing. Splendid. I have your first case. There's been some disturbing reports about a series of assaults in to be here and you don't want me here just <laughs> it was horrible glowing eyes huge claws and his laugh luckily he was frightened away by some passers-by somebody has to do something before he attacks another <laughs> Claw marks on the walls.
close to coming over there. <gasps> I have you now. Out of the way warehouse, lots of guards, mass lunatic inside. This is the bloody life. Nice to see you again, Mr. Dickens. Is it time for another of the Ghost Club stories? As a matter of fact, yes. Follow me. Number 50, Barclay Square. Four stories high and branded, Beware All Those Who Enter. There have been many strange tales of this dreadful domicile. The earliest report of a haunting was said to be the spectre of a small girl who was murdered by a servant. She could be seen at the attic windows weeping and wringing her little hands in an agony of despair. You're not afraid, are you? I'm... Another legend claims the attic is haunted by the spirit of a young woman who purportedly threw herself from the top floor windows to escape her abusive uncle. Her screaming ghost Easy. has reportedly Easy. been sighted hanging from the window ledge. This residence was briefly owned by a Mr. James Jasper, a choir master and an opium addict. His nephew Edward was betrothed to one of Mr. Jasper's pupils, the fair and delicate 
rose. However, Edward disappeared under mysterious circumstances, followed by Jasper himself. Perhaps grief sent him back to the soothing arms of his narcotic mistress. That's it. Well there. Shall we? Though this house is vacant, some say it comes alive at night with screams of terror, ringing bells, and slamming shutters. Although eerie, this phenomenon is easily produced by pneumatic tubes and valves. There are claims that a young man was caged in the attic. His only connection to the rest of the world, a tiny hole in the door. A young man who was reduced to madness by this extreme isolation. The legends all seem to focus on one room in particular. sudden draft. Nothing more. Perhaps, perhaps I shall wait here while you investigate the source of that laughter, which is not at all unsettling. Tell me, why were you at that house? Isn't What's that it to you? Out with it. All right, all right. We were there for the treasure. We found a key to the secret passage. What secret passage? There's yeah, number 50's got a secret passage. Here, take it. Just leave me be. I've found a lock, but I haven't located the key. It's here. Ha! So this is how it works. Impressive. Love for Rosa came near to equaling mine. It should have been enough to keep my beloved nephew away. My poor Ned. Forgive. Uh. Alas, the myth has been discredited. There was no ghost in Barclay Square. Just a wretched soul, driven to murder and madness by guilt and intoxication. I think this is the makings of a rather fine novel. I wonder if I've got one left in me. Seems appropriate. There's been a spate of rather intriguing thefts about town recently. Robberies in London are hardly supernatural events. 
They look like common robberies at first, but these perpetrators have all been in. What's that man done? Yeah. Rob the pawnbrokers down the road. <coughs> a demon made me do it. I can't remember much. That's what's so queer. I've never stolen anything in my life before. What can you tell me about the robbery? There's not much to say. Most of the items did come from the same seller. Enzio Capelli, Sorcerer Supreme, a famous showman from Italy. Several weeks ago, he was forced to pawn his family heirlooms, debts. I have the address of the last person who redeemed something of his. A lovely pearl necklace. That helpful? Not again! Stop her! Stop! Somebody stop that thief! You took something from a pawn shop. What the hell is that? It's all very hazy, but I remember something silver flashing in front of my eyes. Then I heard a sort of bell. Next thing I know, I'm here with you. My only lead is this mysterious buyer. This chap might lead me to the demon.
Mr. Enzio Capelli, I presume? So you're responsible for the theft of your own jewels? You are very much mistaken. Aren't you, my child? Yes, I'm very much mistaken. Hold on. You are very much mistaken. And now you are so very, very tired, aren't you? Yes, I'm very, very tired. Now, you're going to do a little job of work for me, aren't you? <laughs> My goodness! What foul behavior. What's going on? Where am I? You've been arrested for theft. How very intriguing. I can't remember a jot of it. <laughs> Let's get you out of here. I've pulled a few strings and they won't prosecute on account of your losing your mind. Be free, little chicken. friend. Everything all right? There's always too much work to do. Today's Ghost Club investigation involves a carriage. It's said to be covered with gold leaf. Dazzling the Royal Mail coaches vanished when the post began to be transported by rail. To be haunted. And let's see if we can find it. Oh, I'd rather enjoy a sit down. But duty calls. That's curious. Great help. Will you please take me home? I owe you my thanks. You have gone to a great deal of trouble for someone you don't even know. What is your name? Evie Fry. You know. Go on. You have preserved my honor and saved my life. I am Elizabeth. Won't you climb down and sit beside me so that I might see your face? Where is she?
you look as though you're just about to collapse. What on earth has happened? Just a dream. Or so I think. Have you truly no recollection of the events that landed you in a cell? I remember what the other victims remember. A silver watch, the sound of a bell, and a sort of shadow. A glint of silver and a tolling bell. I must say, you look very tired. Yes. I am so very, very tired. Now you're going to do a little job of work for me, aren't you? Now I, I'm going to do a little job of work for you. You've cost me a bit of money, mate. So I think it's only fair that you replenish my coffers with donations from the good people of London. You will steal money for me, won't you? Yes. I will steal money for you. Away from me, you dodger! Good. Very good. Now, we can't have criminals like you roaming the streets. You will surrender to the police, won't you? I will surrender to the police. Oh, and when you do, you're going to do a silly little dance for them. I say, you gave me a terrible fright, muttering about a man named Ezio. Enzio Capelli, not a demon, but a hypnotist.
me go, don't you? I admit it. I'm not Italian. It was just for my act. Nobody wanted to see a British hypnotist. Now, shut up. I'll give you anything you want. I want you. Do you know a Dr. John Elliotson? Never heard of the man. Did you really think mesmerism would work? How dare you? I'm a hypnotist. You will not chase me anymore. Not again! Time to confess and free the people under your silly spell. Goodness, you're here. Impossible as it may sound, spring Heel Jack has returned. We need to do something before the unthinkable happens. He did say that we'd not seen the last of the spring Heeled villain. There may be more to this than we originally thought.
mercy from my faithless claws. <laughs> you will be bored by man can harm me. You'll have to do better than that. Vanished? Impossible. Thanks to you, the Ghost Club's reputation has grown tremendously. We are a beacon of reason in a world beguiled by superstition. But I believe we have encountered one genuine spirit. Can you be certain? That's the question. One might surmise that the spirits that haunt us are simply our deepest fears, manifested as apparitions. Shame. I've always wanted to see a ghost or a goblin. I propose a toast to the Ghost Club and the virtuous twins that have aided it. Miss Evie and Mr. Jacob. Cheers. Cheers. Darwin, do you think our young friend here, equipped with a multiplicity of talents, might be enough to ensure Mr. Hammond safe passage? I do not believe I've had the pleasure of meeting a Mr. Hammond. A mutual friend of ours. He arrives in London today. From South Africa, no less. Mr. Hammond is possessed of both tremendous wealth and charming innocence which makes him rather attractive prey for some of our great city's less savory inhabitants. We fear Mr. Hammond, I believe? That is correct. Evie Fry. Mr. Dickens sent me to meet you. Now, oh, good old Dickens. How very kind of him. Lead on, then. London. Say I missed the weather. My father passed away recently, and I have come home to settle his affairs. Also, I am to be married. You don't sound too eager for the happy event. I have never even met my future bride, Bella Wilton. It was all arranged for me. She may be a good woman, or she may not. I stand to inherit a vast sum. Can I be certain that the lady is not simply in it for the money? Officially dead and have thus shed my fortune. I shall meet Bella Wilton as a nobody. We shall see if she'll have me now. Come, we must dispose of my body. Find us a carriage to take us to the river. Good work. How exciting. This is like something of a novel.
I can't wait to see her response. I feel quite liberated, as if a great weight has been lifted from my shoulders. After this, just to be sure, would you take me to my fiancé's house? I shall deliver the sad news myself. Don't you think that's a little risky? She has never set eyes on me. Besides, I need to ascertain whether I like her as well. And I want to see how she reacts to the news of my death. Faster! Come on, hurry up! This is taking far too long. You're going the wrong way, I'm sure of it. Miss Wilson? Yes? My name is John Rokesmith. I'm afraid I have some terrible news for you. Oh? Your fiancé, John Hammond, was found dead in the River Thames this morning. Oh, how awful! Poor Mr. Hammond. I am at a loss at what to say to you, sir. You must forgive me. She is delightful. Why, I do believe I love her. I hope she's more intrigued than she is appalled. Remember that young lady who was engaged to marry before I faint my death so that I could see what sort of woman she was? Well, I have good news. That's I'm it. I'm now in love with her and I want to marry her after all. And I need you to help. Come on! I have a rather artful plan. You, playing the part of a ruffian, will kidnap her. Then you must bring her to where I am waiting. I shall leap from a shadowy corner and beat you to a pulp, thereby saving her life and winning her heart. Have you thought this through? There you go. Now, put me down somewhere insalubrious and I shall ready an ambush for you. Somewhere in Lambeth should suffice. <laughs> This'll do. Looks rough enough. Off you go and nab her. She's at Waterloo Station, I believe. Oh, and make sure you play your part well. Come on. I shall save you, madam, for I am John Hammond, your fiancé. What? Oh, girl! Take this, you rogue! You're nothing compared to me! Take your punishment! Suspicious. Clearly, I am your better. Take this, you rogue! Take your punishment! Clearly, I 
And you're better. Take this, you rogue. Take your punishment. Ah, clearly, I am your better. What a happy coincidence that you were here to save me. Wasn't it? And if you will allow me, my dearest Bella, I shall forever be by your side to protect you from this day forth. Come, my dear, let us be gone from this terrible place, and I shall explain all. I'm certain Mr. Dickens and Mr. Darwin would like to know of their friend's good fortune. And so, all's well that ends well. Our young lovers are united at last and will soon marry. I, too, hope to meet a man who will fake his own death and arrange my abduction just to see if I can be trusted. And by the looks of you, they really hit it off. <laughs> I must say, it's all rather exciting. I do love these sorts of tales. It all feels strangely familiar. I wonder why. We should drink to John Hammond and his unconventional idea of courtship. Indeed. To John Hammond, our mutual friend.